An F rank hero who trained hard and unlocked SS rank power to become the strongest hero. Lightning flashes and thunder rumbles in the sky as a young man suddenly gets flung to the ground. He rolls around on the dirt, struggling to catch his breath. Above him, a group of people watches intently. One of them congratulates him for the significant improvement he has made over the last two years. Another tells him that the E-rank exam should no longer be a problem for him. In fact, someone else comments that he would probably destroy the testing venue now. These powerful individuals radiate with energy as they assess him. Meanwhile, on the ground, the young man can't help but remark that he is still nowhere near his four masters level. The scene shifts to a bright, sunny day in a bustling city. Strong-looking young people are everywhere, all headed towards a large building. Inside, a lady announces that the registration for the E-rank promotion exam is currently ongoing. The young man, Rick, approaches the desk to take his exam ticket, but the girl behind the counter recognizes him. The girl, Alyssa, reminds him that they used to work together two years ago. She was shocked when Rick abruptly resigned from their jobs and declared he would become an adventurer. Rick looks embarrassed as he admits that starting out as an adventurer in their 30 seconds seems foolish especially when most adventurers started at F rank in their teens and reached E rank two years later. Alyssa asks him what he has been doing for the past two years. Rick explains that he has been training extensively with his masters. Their conversation is interrupted by a drunk man who arrives at the counter and starts harassing Alyssa. The drunk persistently asks Alyssa to go have fun with him. When Alyssa tries to reject him, he grabs her hand and tries to force her. Rick intervenes, grabbing the drunk man. Alyssa apologizes to Rick, but the drunk passes out in Rick's arms. Bystanders start wondering what all the commotion is about. Rick explains that the drunk must have consumed too much alcohol. With that resolved, Alyssa finally hands Rick his exam ticket. To his horror, he gets the unlucky number 4242. He exits the building, where the dark elf Ryanette, one of Rick's masters, asks him how the registration went. Inside, the adventurers are amazed to see a handprint on the drunk's armor, which seems to have caused him to pass out. They recognize the drunk as the former ranker, Dommel, who is wanted for assault. Alyssa recalls how Rick grabbed the drunk earlier and wonders if he was the one who knocked him out. Meanwhile, Rick undergoes the physical examination first. Doctors assess his height and weight, surprised and concerned to learn that Rick is already 32 years old. After the physical exam, the next step is the magical exam. Examinees place their hands on a crystal ball that measures their mana, shining according to their mana levels. As the examinees start, some get D or D they are amazed when one girl gets C+, a high aptitude for an F-rank adventurer. When it's Rick's turn, he touches the ball and a small light appears, only to soon disappear, resulting in an F-grade from the doctor. Other examinees start gossiping and mocking Rick, but he ignores them and leaves. The doctor is about to call the next examinee when the crystal ball Rick used suddenly breaks. The next part of the test measures offensive ability. Examinees are tasked with hitting a glowing green column with their attack. Rick recognizes the column as a slime bag, triggering memories of his training. His master used to tell him that the basis of one's strength is their flesh. If Rick could destroy a golden slime bag with his fist, he could trust that his body was strong enough. Despite Rick's protest, as golden slimes are as hard as a dragon's fang, his master boasted about destroying 200 at once, lightly tapping a slime bag and making it explode in all directions. From that moment, Rick practiced on the golden slime bag, punching it 50,000 times a day. Back in the present, examinees hit the bag while the proctor records their results. When a young blonde 11-year-old boy is called, he confidently steps forward. He is the rumored second son of the Diamuid family, with rumors stating his magic is already at C-rank level. In summary, the boy is a true prodigy. To the amazement of everyone, he starts chanting a spell and creates fire with his bare hands. He then launches an attack, producing a fist-sized fireball and shoots it at the slime bag, which promptly absorbs it. Rick is surprised at how tiny the fireball, but everyone else seems impressed by the attack. However, Rick can only think of how another one of his masters loved throwing fireballs at him. Unfortunately, his master's fireballs were the size of houses and exploded like nuclear bombs. Rick wonders if the boy just condensed his magic because they are indoors. After a few more examinees, it's Rick's turn on the slime bag. He is about to start when the proctor remarks on his age of 32. The proctor then tells him that his mana never had time to grow since he started so late, as shown by his mana results. He advises Rick to give up. Rick feels the gaze of the much younger examinees, but he remembers how he always stood up and continued his training, even with bloody fists. He doesn't understand what's wrong with becoming an adventurer at his age. Rick punches the green slime bag so hard in anger that it slams into the wall, destroying it and spraying green slime all over the room. Everyone is stunned while Rick looks at his hand and guesses that the slime bag must be defective. 
Meanwhile, the young boy is annoyed at Rick for upstaging him and promises to show him up at the next test, defensive magic. Unfortunately for him, Rick once again surprises everyone as he withstands the Proctor's attacks. The Proctor recognizes that Rick is still using First Nature magic to block his attack and advises Rick to level it up for the next one. Rick admits that he can actually only use First Nature magic. Nevertheless, he is confident in his skills. The Proctor concedes and starts casting a Fifth Nature magic attack. A huge cyclone of air blasts forth from the Proctor's hands, hitting Rick directly in the chest. The massive cyclone of wind even breaks the magic barriers surrounding the venue. Sylvester Urselny, the first-ranked knight of the Royal Knights, is on the outskirts of the city and sees the shockwaves coming from the training grounds. He assumes that something terrible is happening there, so he quickly makes his way to the exam center. He learns from one of the examiners that an F-ranked weak adventurer blocked a military-grade nature magic using only a defensive first nature magic. Sylvester finds it unbelievable and assumes that the examiner is joking with him. The examiner assures him that this is indeed the case, and even shows him the profile of the examinee. Upon examining the details, Sylvester finds it even more questionable that a 32-year-old man, who was nothing more than a guild receptionist a few years ago, has suddenly become this powerful. After the defense test, the first round of exams comes to an end, and Rick heads outside with Rionette to rest for a moment. Rionette reminds Rick that the next exam will be an intelligence test, meaning it will be a written exam to measure all of the adventurer's knowledge. Rick confidently announces that he will get a 100% score in the written test, telling Rionette that just because he was a receptionist, she shouldn't underestimate his intellect. Still, all he did for 14 long years was welcome drunk, negative adventurers, which is why Rionette is skeptical of him getting top marks. Rick realizes that he cannot convince her of his intelligence. So he drops his act and tells her that he is more worried about the first round's results. Despite clearly excelling in the practical exams, his magical power of mana was ranked as an F and he fears he will not attain a high rank. Rionette comforts him, telling him that no matter what the result might be, he should be proud of himself for showing astonishing growth in the past two years. The blonde prodigy, who just can't mind his own business, comes to annoy Rick and Rionette because he has nothing better to do with his life. Rick recognizes this sore loser as the so-called prodigy, but fails to recall his name. So, the boy introduces himself once again as Free Diamuit. Rick doesn't want to be involved with any minors, as he doesn't want to get cancelled by the internet. He asks the boy why he has come here and if he has gotten lost. Seeing his angry face, Rick assumes the kid might be looking for his parents and offers to help him find them. Freed, of course, finds Rick's unintentional remarks rather insulting and accuses him of deliberately stealing his thunder at the exam. According to Freed, it was his long-awaited dream to become the main character, and he had planned the whole year how he would show off his brilliance at this exam. But because of Rick, he failed to have a heroic debut and couldn't stand out. Seeing that the kid is almost on the verge of tears, Rick tries to calm him down, promising him that it wasn't his intention at all. While Rick is desperately trying to come to an understanding with the obnoxious kid, another person with a wacky haircut enters, accusing Rick of making children cry. This twin ponytail girl, Angelica, is apparently the elder sister of Freed and is here to protect her little brother from this scary middle-aged uncle. Freed tells Angelica that Rick was bullying him and even exaggerates that this uncle is in his 40s. Believing her little brother's words, Angelica decides to teach Rick a lesson and challenges him to a duel. She is most certainly full of herself and deserves to be humble. Rick is forced to accept the challenge, even though he doesn't want to get involved in any unnecessary fights, and is taken to the training grounds. There, Angelica officially introduces herself as a second-class knight of the Royal Knights, indicating that she is quite strong. According to Angelica, duels in this kingdom allow the winner to set a term for their victory. Her term is that Rick becomes her servant for the rest of his life. She proudly tells him that once she defeats him in the duel, she will discipline him in every possible way to make sure he never bullies children again. Rick ignores the blonde with no brains for now and asks Rionette if she knows what rank Angelica. Since Angelica is a second-class knight, Rionette assumes she is a B-ranked adventurer. This means she has the capability to defeat a high-level monster on her own without a party. Rick underestimates his own abilities and starts to think he will never be able to beat Angelica because he is just an F-rank adventurer. He isn't even sure if he will make it out alive in this duel. As he begins to panic, Rionette once again comforts him, telling him to stay calm and use the training he has been through these last two years. Rionette's words make Rick remember the gruesome training he endured, which terrifies him to the point of nausea. Still, Rionette continues to encourage him, reminding him that he is now a member of the strongest adventure party on the continent, the Orichalcum Fist. 
Thanks to Rionette's words, Rick regains his composure and prepares for his duel with Angelica. Angelica, who had been tolerating Rick's hesitation, can't wait any longer and brings out her sword, enhancing her body and weapon with magic. She dashes at him with quick speed, taking him by surprise. Not because she is extremely fast, but because she is pathetically slow. From his perspective, Angelica is running at a much slower pace than his normal running speed, making him realize that maybe B-ranked adventurers aren't that impressive. He avoids Angelica's second attack, which she assumes happened by fluke because she can't believe an F-ranked adventurer could evade her lightspeed attack. She goes for a third attack and once again disappoints Rick, who begins to think that Angelica might have made it to B-rank through nepotism or something. He does not for once consider that he might be strong. As she keeps coming at him with her snail-like strikes, Rick finally decides to intercept her. He aims for her head but misses by an inch, creating a huge crater on the ground. This makes Angelica realize that Rick is actually overpowered. She immediately surrenders, letting him win the duel. She begins to leave with Freed, but Rick stops her, reminding her of the punishment terms she had set. The loser would become the winner's servant for life. However, Angelica refuses to keep her word and makes a run for it with her brother. With the duel over, Rick wonders about the results of the first round of the exams. Rionette informs Rick that Master Bronson and the others will be coming to the guild soon. Hearing this news, Rick becomes startled again, as he doesn't want to face these scary, overpowered entities. Alyssa then informs the examinees that the results of the first exam will be announced shortly. Mana will be sent to their exam tickets, and if their tickets glow blue, it means they have passed and will participate in the mock battle for the second stage tomorrow. Rick is anxious about passing, and Rionette reassures him to have confidence. Rick thinks Rionette is very kind and would be the perfect girl for him if he were 10 years younger. Rionette playfully tells him that if he fails, they will just triple his training, which makes Rick think that would kill him. When Rick's card glows blue, he is thrilled to see that he has passed. Rionette congratulates him, and as they step out of the room, Rick detects a foul stench. A blonde playboy appears and introduces himself as Raster Diamuid, the eldest son of the Diamuid family, who governs the nobles of the north. Rick finds Raster's introduction too long to remember, and mentally dubs him the playboy. Raster praises Rionette's beauty and asks for her name. After she introduces herself, he tries to flirt with her, and Rick wonders if this guy is also participating in the exam. Rick introduces himself to Raster, but Raster shows no interest in him. Raster continues to flirt with Rionette, and Rick is creeped out by his cheesy lines. When Raster asks Rionette to become his second wife, Rick steps in and claims that Rionette is his girlfriend, insisting that Raster stop hitting on her. Raster notices Rick is an exam participant and mocks him for being an F-ranked adventurer at his age. Rick retorts that it's also late for Raster to be taking the exam at his age, as he must be 25 already. Raster boasts that he made it to E-rank at 14 and is currently in a rank adventurer, here as an examiner for the second stage of the exam. He shows Rick his adventurer rank badge and tells him to go away. Raster then asks Rionette to have lunch with him, but she declines saying she is currently dating Rick and adds that his perfume is too strong. Rick realizes the stench was coming from Raster all along. Raster leaves after warning Rick to pray he doesn't end up as his examiner. Rick hopes the same and then apologizes to Rionette for claiming she was his girlfriend. She says she doesn't mind and that seeing him try to protect her made her happy. The scene then shifts to Raster in a bar fuming over Rick, ruining his afternoon. His younger siblings come to him, crying about being harassed by a man in his forties. Raster gets angry at the man for making his proud family members cry. He suspects the man might be Rick and asks if they remember his participant number. When they provide it, Raster smirks. The next day, Rick is worried about the mock exam, and Rionette advises him to hold back in the fight. Rick doesn't understand what she means but hopes Raster isn't his examiner. They then meet a man named Lynx Lara, who will be in charge of Rick in the second stage of the exam. Rick is relieved to hear this and learns that Lynx handles participants numbered 4200 and above. Rick feels lucky that his number is 4242. 
Lynx finds it remarkable that a 30-year-old receptionist switched careers to become an adventurer. Although Rick acknowledges that he is starting late, Lynx is actually impressed and mentions that Rick's decision has motivated him as a fellow middle-aged man. Lynx shares that he also became an adventurer at the age of 24 and suggests that if Rick is entering this career in his 30s, there must be something significant he wants to achieve. Rick shares that he does have a dream and wonders how Lynx knew about it. Lynx explains that he knows because they are alike. Despite being in his 30s, Lynx dreams of becoming an A-ranked adventurer. He mentions that it took him 20 years to reach B-rank, but he has no intention of giving up. The two shake hands, expressing their mutual respect and anticipation for each other's future. Meanwhile, Raster spies on them with a scheming look. As Lynx heads to the exam venue, Raster intercepts him, insisting they need to talk. Later, Rick, now in the waiting room, looks cheerful. A guild receptionist enters, announcing that Lynx Lorat, the examiner for participants numbered 4200 and above, has suddenly fallen ill. Consequently, Raster Diamuid will take over as the examiner for this group. Rionet informs Rick that Raster is the playboy from yesterday, surprising Rick. She speculates that, as a Diamuid, Raster might be related to Angelica and Freed. Rick notices that the other adventurers seem displeased by this change. He overhears them discussing Raster's prestigious noble background and his achievement of reaching a rank at 17. They call him the Man of a Thousand Spells and note his infamous reputation as an F-rank crusher who enjoys targeting participants who catch his eye. Rick realizes that he has more than just caught Raster's attention. The scene shifts to Raster crushing an F-ranked adventurer in the exam. A butler approaches, and Raster asks if the elite guards are ready. Back in the waiting room, Rick worries about Raster being his examiner, while Rionette questions if he really needs to be this concerned. Rick explains that after hearing the rumors, he can't help but worry. He fears failing the exam and undergoing the triple training Rionette and the others mentioned which he believes will be his end. Rionette asks if he lacks confidence. Rick admits that starting late in this career makes him naturally insecure, as everyone constantly tells him it's impossible. Rionette suggests that he flip this around. If his confidence can be shaken by others' negativity, it can also be bolstered by their support. She reassures him of her belief in his strength and expresses confidence that he will pass the exam and defeat the playboy. She recalls always believing in him since he decided to become an adventurer and asks if he will believe in her. Rick thanks her, feeling much more confident. A shady-looking guy then approaches Rick, offering to tell his fortune if he's worried about the exam. He leads Rick to his stall and offers a free reading. Although skeptical about fortune-telling, Rick decides to try it for fun. As soon as he sits down, he is teleported. The fortune-teller is revealed to be Freed, who celebrates accomplishing his goal. However, Rionette destroys his setup and demands to know where he teleported Rick. Intimidated by her power, Freed starts panicking and admits that teleportation magic is complex. Even with his abilities, he can only move things up to 100 meters. He assures her that Rick should be nearby, and we see Rick just behind the exam venue. Rick, disoriented, wonders how he ended up there. He encounters some rough-looking individuals who threaten to put him to sleep. Rick thinks they might have mistaken him for someone else, but they assure him there is no mistake, identifying themselves as the elite guards of Diamuid. Rick realizes that the elite guards work for Raster, the playboy, and they intend to prevent him from participating in the exam. When Rick accuses them of using dirty tricks to stall for time, they correct him, stating that they are planning to gang up on him. They boast about their powers, claiming to be equivalent to B-rankers, with some even rivaling a rankers, and prepare to attack. Rick fears this might be the end for him, and he can't believe he'll be disqualified like this. However, before the elite guards can strike, senior members of his party arrive. Rick is both relieved and terrified to see them, 
wondering why he isn't at the exam venue. The elite guards are startled to see a talking orc, and Rick tries to play it cool by saying he was just warming up with the guards before the exam. The elite guards don't follow along with his act, and Rick warns their leader to back off if they want to survive. One guard attacks the orc, but his sword shatters. The orc comments that while he has a decent body, his weapon needs strengthening. The guard attempts to fight the orc barehanded, but the orc breaks his hand, then heals it using magic, surprising everyone. The elite guard's leader realizes who these newcomers are, while the blonde-haired dwarf, named Mizzet, steps in, offering to resolve the situation peacefully. He brandishes a weapon, revealing it to be a magic-powered gun. When the elite guards try to attack Mizzet, he opens fire. Rick points out that Mizzet just said he would resolve things peacefully, and Mizzet retorts that it's fine since no one is dead. Another guard then takes the little girl, Elicerate, hostage to stop the others. But Rick knows this only worsens their situation. Elicerate quickly takes them out using her magic. The elite guard's leader introduces the little girl as Elicerate, a prodigious vampire mage known as the Demon Child of Ruin. He introduces the orc as Bretstina Shork, an intelligent master of support magic, and Mizzet Eldwarf as a 55-year-old dwarf and the world's best craftsman, seemingly from the future. He reveals that they are all S-ranked adventurers and part of the strongest party on the continent, Orichalcum Fist, which consists only of S-rankers. The elite guards are shocked by this revelation and their leader contemplates retirement after witnessing the strength of Orichalcum Fist. Elicerate then defeats the remaining guards, and Rick resolves to do his best in the exam to avoid her wrath. Meanwhile, Rionet continues holding Freed hostage, demanding to know where Rick was teleported. Freed insists Rick won't return, believing the elite guards have dealt with him, but Rick reappears. Rionet throws Freed aside upon seeing Rick safe and Rick notices the damage to the wall. She explains she only cut it a little, and Rick remarks on her strength. Lynx then arrives, badly injured. They help him sit, and he reveals that Raster attacked him. Lynx explains that Raster asked about his dream, and when he shared his desire to build a school for aspiring adventurers in his hometown, Raster mocked him and beat him up, saying a third-rate adventurer could only teach third-rate students Lynx feels frustrated and wonders if it's irresponsible for someone like him to have a dream. Rick, angered by this, encourages Lynx, saying it's never too late to pursue a dream. Despite Lynx's warning to withdraw from the exam to avoid Raster's wrath, Rick heads towards the arena, determined to face Raster. Meanwhile, Raster, learning that his elite guards failed, decides to deal with Rick personally. Rick marches to the arena, filled with rage. Afterward, the scene shifts to Raster effortlessly defeating other participants before facing Rick. An observer, Adolf, comments that this is what he expects from an AE rank exam. Adolf introduces himself and explains that there are four core attributes of power. Strength, dexterity, mana capacity, and magic control. These attributes are crucial for an adventurer's prowess and he has the ability to visualize a person's power cores. Adolf examines the next participant's strength, noticing the individual is below average and is quickly defeated by Raster. When he assesses Raster, he sees that Raster's mana capacity is maxed out, though he lacks in other areas. Despite this, Raster's stats are impressive for an Aranker, straining Adolf's eyes with his strength. Adolf then notices Rick, an older examinee waiting for his turn, and becomes curious. Upon checking Rick's stats, Adolf's eyes sting even more as he sees that Rick has maxed out everything except for mana capacity. The scene transitions to Ryanette in the stands, preparing to watch Rick's match. She encounters Alyssa, who introduces herself as Rick's former co-worker and mentions seeing Ryanette with Rick the previous day. Ryanette introduces herself as Rick's current party member. Alyssa is then invited to sit with Ryanette and her friends, though she's surprised to see an orc with them. Mizzet asks Ryanette to sit with him, but she declines, knowing he would get handsy. 
He inquires about Alyssa, and after being introduced, Mizzet invites Alyssa to sit beside him. However, Ryanette quickly takes Alyssa away to prevent Mizzet from perving on her. When it's Rick's turn to fight, he enters the arena. Bruffston, watching from the stands, wonders about Rick's performance in the exams. Ryanette confidently states that Rick will pass without problems. Alyssa, however, is doubtful since Rick's opponent is Raster, whom she describes as an ranker known for overwhelming participants unnecessarily. Bruffston reassures them, believing there's no need to worry. As the match is about to start, in the stand, Angelica cheers for her brother, urging him to beat Rick. Raster is surprised to see Rick, having escaped from his elite guards, though he dismisses it as unimpressive since they are only commoners. He warns Rick not to expect the same level of skill from a refined noble like him. Rick, sensing Raster's strength, inquires why he became an adventurer. Raster explains that his talent led him to adventuring, and that being a high-ranking adventurer brings prestige to a noble. He reveals his intention to quit soon out of boredom. Rick, determined, states he will never lose to someone as shallow as Raster. Raster arrogantly tells Rick to mind his words, as he won't be speaking for long. He casts a first nature spell as a warning shot, but Rick remains unfazed. Raster wonders if Rick is scared, while Rick calms himself, remembering Ryanette's advice to observe his opponent for the first minute. Though unsure, he decides to trust her judgment. Confidently, Raster casts a third-level magic spell at Rick, who takes it head-on, only sustaining a scratch. Alyssa is surprised, but Bruffston reassures her, explaining that such a spell wouldn't affect Rick. He asks if she knows about the four cores of power, which she names, indicating her knowledge. Bruffston elaborates that Mana capacity must be trained from a young age, as it stops growing after 20. Elissa recalls that Rick began training at 30, explaining his low Mana capacity. Bruffston recounts Rick's first training session, where he had to run to a nearby village with 100 kilogram ankle weights through a forest full of carnivorous beasts needing to stay close to Bruffston to survive. Bruffston informs Alyssa that since Rick lacks mana capacity, they focused on training his other three cores. Raster attacks Rick with a fourth-level magic spell, which Rick also takes head on. Bruffston then tells Alyssa that Mizzet was responsible for Rick's mana control training. Alyssa recalls how Mizzet would often playfully use magic on Rick. We learn that Ryanette trained Rick's dexterity. Alyssa is surprised by this, as she assumed Ryanette was just a maid. Bruffston explains that Ryanette wears the maid outfit as a hobby and emphasizes that Rick has taken all their training to heart, achieving the capabilities of an S-ranked adventurer, just like them. Alyssa is astounded to hear this, and Ryanette mentions that Rick is unaware of his own strength, largely because Bruffston has always downplayed his abilities. Raster attacks Rick again with another fourth-level spell, but Rick remains unfazed. Frustrated, Raster continues to bombard Rick with spells, ending by crushing him between two rocks. He assumes he has won, but Rick pushes the rocks aside, infuriating Raster with his resilience. Raster attempts to punch Rick, but Rick retaliates, realizing what Ryanette meant. He observes that Raster has relied too much on his innate talent and neglected skill training. Despite his vast mana, his other skills are lacking. Rick declares that he won't lose to someone like Raster, who dismisses Rick's defiance as accidental luck. Raster then attacks with a third-level magic spell using an incantation, but Rick stops it barehanded. Alyssa is bewildered, and Mizzet explains that Rick used a precisely woven bit of magic utilizing only 100,000th of the mana Raster used, thanks to his accurate mana control. Raster attributes Rick's success to coincidence and tries to attack again, but Rick punches him, mitigating the damage with Steel Body. Raster grudgingly acknowledges that Rick is more powerful than an E-ranked adventurer and blames his poor performance on fatigue from examining too many participants. He sarcastically comments on Rick's amazing luck for a commoner, 
But Rick insists it's not luck, he's using his dexterity to overpower Raster's strengthening magic. Raster scoffs, believing it's impossible for someone without mana to become this strong in two years. Rick explains that his strength comes from rigorous training, including being locked in a dragon's nest, swimming in paralyzing liquid until he drowned, and running through chains of explosions. Alyssa finds this hard to believe, as it would kill a normal person multiple times. But Bruffston explains that Rick did die and was revived each time through quick healing. This cycle of destruction and restoration made Rick incredibly strong. Raster thinks Rick is lying and questions what kind of motivation could drive him to such extremes. Rick reveals that his dream is to defeat the world's strongest monster, Kaiser Al Sapiet. Raster and Freed laugh, believing Kaiser Al Sapiet to be a fictional character from the legend of Yamaton the hero. Bruffston mentions that the goal of Orichalcum Fist is also to defeat that monster. Raster mocks Rick, saying only children dream of defeating a fictional character. But Rick insists it's none of his business. Annoyed, Raster uses a seventh level magic spell to bind Rick. Rick is surprised by Raster's ability to use seventh level magic without incantation. Raster then chants an incantation for an eighth level spell, summoning a giant tree monster under his control. His siblings cheer, thinking he will definitely win now and the spectators are amazed to see 8th level magic. Raster declares he will make Rick grovel, while Rick prepares to use air shot. Raster ridicules Rick for attempting to counter his 8th level magic with a 1st level spell. Rick asks how much Raster has trained with a spell, and Raster smugly admits he mastered it in a few tries. Rick reveals he has used air shot a hundred million times. Freed, Raster and Alyssa find this hard to believe, thinking it impossible in just two years. Bruffston explains that it's possible using space-time magic, which Rick employed in his training. Raster punches Rick using the tree monster, but Rick counters with his own punch, enhanced by air shot. Rick's punch manages to overpower the monster, shattering it to pieces and knocking Raster unconscious and out of the arena. The audience is astonished by Rick's victory, and Alyssa thinks he is amazing. Afterwards, Rick meets Alyssa and his party mates, who congratulate him on his win. He thanks them all, and Alyssa tells him he was absolutely amazing out there. Rick is delighted to hear this, realizing for the first time that he is truly strong. He wonders why he never realized it until now and expresses his gratitude to his party mates for everything they have done for him. They tell him there is no need for gratitude. Just then, Raster appears, barely able to walk on his own. Rick asks if Raster is wondering why an elite like him lost to a late bloomer. Raster suspects Rick is mocking him, but Rick calmly explains that while he may not be able to use many skills, he has honed the ones he can use to the highest level possible. He suggests that Raster should also start by mastering one skill and looks forward to his future growth. Raster is not happy to hear this, but declares that he will test Rick again during his next promotion exam and win that fight. He then leaves Inga, and the scene shifts to the members of Orichalcum Fist, having lunch while waiting for Rick to return with his exam results. Rick is seen waiting for his results along with the other examinees, feeling much calmer than before. Ryanette notices this and comments on it. Rick responds that he was reminded of his goal earlier and knows he is not going to fail. He is not going to fail. 